I'm sitting here with Tom Francis. Uh, we're looking at his new game, Heat Signature. Um, I'm going to let you describe what it is. Okay, it's a top-down space stealth game uh, set in a randomly generated open world. So um, you have this huge map of, uh, of all the territory that all the different factions have. And the game itself is about sneaking up on spaceships and boarding them. So you're flying around in this tiny defenseless pod uh, that has no weapons. And when you get up to a bigger ship like this, uh, you can kind of match its speed, cruise in, and uh, dock with its airlock to go inside. And then once you're inside, it becomes more like a kind of Hotline Miami style stealth action game uh, in which you can get horribly murdered very quickly. <laughs> But, um, as is, we, we had a demo before, and I, I was horribly murdered in space too. But they are kind enough to uh, eject you from the airlock. You can still save it if yeah. you get if you get killed. Yeah. So uh, right now I'm passing out, but I'm able to remote control my ship to uh, fly and pick me up. And as long as my ship can catch me before I run out of blood, then it can heal me, and I'll be my condition will be stabilised. So if I get up close enough, I catch myself, and now I'm safe. Okay. So. Your, your last game, Gunpoint, um, was a very authored experience, but you've gone for procedural generation this time around. Why did, why did you make that decision? Um, I've always been fascinated by procedural generation, and I love Spelunky. That was the game that kind of inspired uh, me to start making games in the first place, because uh, it showed how like a simple game can keep generating really cool experiences. And I would have gone for procedural generation in Gunpoint as well, uh, except that I just thought it'd be too hard. And uh, it is hard, but what I learned through Gunpoint was that hand-making content is also really hard. So if you're going to spend a lot of time on this either way, you might as well go for the option that generates infinite content rather than the one that generates three hours of content. One of the things that uh, struck me about Gunpoint was you know, that I really enjoyed the narrative layer that, that you had in there. Um, is there something similar in Heat Signature? Uh, there isn't in this build, but the plan is to have, rather than one long story where you know, you're the hero and there's a villain of some kind and you, um, you know, just follow it through to its natural conclusion, what I'd like to do is have um, individual characters who kind of live on these stations. So like, once you capture this particular station, you unlock this particular character to play as, and they will have their own story going on where you know, they're in some danger or they're trying to rescue somebody or um, they owe somebody money or something. And they have a little self-contained story that you play through. You do a series of missions, and they have like a handler or an allies that they talk to with dialogue trees, and you make decisions about how to handle their, their problems. And that would, you know, I envision that being sort of like half an hour, an hour, and then uh, you wrap it up and you're done with that character, and then there'll just be others dotted around. So smaller, isolated stories that are kind of more like side quests in um, uh, something like Skyrim, except that you're always playing as the person who is, you know, central to the story. There's, there's, there's some interesting lore that you were telling him about earlier. So uh, now I've got the camera, we've got the camera rolling. I'm going to ask you to tell us again. Yeah, so this uh, area of space, all these gas clouds, um, are kind of a, there's very valuable gas that is, uh, people can turn into fuel. And um, this is an area of space that was kind of colonized decades ago by this faction called Foundry, who uh, were sent here to investigate to see whether they had this, this fuel stuff. And they set up loads of space stations, they've been mining it for ages, and everyone ignored them until recently when um, a huge kind of conflagration event burnt up the galaxy's main fuel reserve. Like the wrong combination of gases mixed together, the whole thing went up and now the galaxy is desperately scarce of fuel. Um, and so everyone's muscling in on this one backwater place that's light years from anywhere and trying to take part of it for themselves. And they all have the different motivations for doing that. So obviously the people who built these space stations feel they're entitled to this place because they built it. The people who originally sent them there feel that they're entitled to this place because they paid for the, you know, the expedition that, that came here. There's another faction who refused to kill anybody and they say they're here to you know, make peace and make sure that lives aren't lost. Uh, but in the process, they're capturing more territory just like everyone else. Uh, so they all have their own justifications for what they're doing. Okay. So it's uh, your plans are PC um, when it's ready. Yep. Uh, and single player only. Single player. Um, and uh, as with Gunpoint, uh, there's no plans for other platforms until Windows is is done. Basically, I always do that first because it's the easy one, <laughs> and then. Uh, depending on how well that goes, and um, I can look into other stuff. I mean, have you uh, thought about Gunpoint on consoles, just kind of whilst we're talking in that kind of general um, area? Yeah, I don't have any plans for that. Um, it's kind of suited PC very well. Uh, and at that time, 
it wasn't something that I want to do personally because it's a technical challenge and I'm not really a programmer. <laughs> um, you have got a background in PC gaming as well. Yeah, and I like game design and I like making new things. And so after Gunpoint, I wanted to move on. Uh, I have looked into getting things done externally, like getting another company to handle it. With Gunpoint, that was very difficult because um, I it was my whole reputation, really. Like Gunpoint was the only thing I'd made. So uh, if there was ever a bad version of Gunpoint or even just one that wasn't great, um, it would kind of reflect on me and it would be, you know, could kind of ruin my reputation before I even got a chance to get started. So when that was my only thing in the world, I, didn't, I couldn't trust anyone else to do anything with it, really. Um, so that's why I haven't done it yet. And uh, that still kind of applies. I still haven't made, you know, this game still isn't out. Um, but maybe once I've got more games on my belt, I'll be more, you know, relaxed about that kind of stuff. So what's the immediate plan uh, with the heat signature? Where are you in, in the kind of the grand scheme of things? Well, I've kind of built what I set out to build, um, you know, according to my latest plan, which is uh, this huge sandbox of factions who can all um, uh, fight. Each time you die in this game, your character is dead forever, but the galaxy persists. So if I take on a mission to um, intercept one of these trade routes, which I'll try and do while I'm talking. In fact, I can do it to this one. Um, I'll break that trade route, and if you break enough trade routes, then stations become isolated and you can capture them. And so you like, expand your empire and um, uh, you know, uh, diminish the empires of your enemies. But uh, now that that's in there, um, it's quite time consuming and uh, difficult. And after you've done it, basically the whole idea of a big sandbox that responds to your actions and is dynamic and everything is um, a bit less interesting than I thought it would be. So now I'm kind of toying with making it a more directed experience or giving you a kind of clearer objective. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that was unlucky. Um, and so, yeah, I'm thinking about rather than working for one of these huge factions who already has a big presence, maybe you are um, you have just arrived in this place and you have no territory at all. And so you're trying to get any kind of foothold. Um, and maybe rather than trying to conquer the whole galaxy, you have some other objective, like there's some particular station you need to get to or um, some way to fight through the galaxy. So that kind of stuff is very tricky to figure out. Um, and it's very hard to know what systems are going to work till you've built them. So I built the reactive sandbox type system. And it's kind of cool, but I feel like it needs more direction. When I watch people play here, uh, they enjoy it. But they often have to ask me, like, what am I supposed to be doing? Or where do I go? What do I do? Um, and uh, I want that stuff to be in there. I want you to be able to um, uh, do whatever you want and explore this and play as different people. But I think it also needs something more directed up front. Like you just, I tell you, you're this guy, you're trying to do this, do that. Um, and then afterwards we can get into more sandboxy stuff. So um, I heard you mention uh, closed beta, plans for that maybe in the near future? Yeah, I can't really confirm anything, but they, it would make sense to do one. Uh, I haven't done one in ages. And um, it would make sense to do one just after res because it took a lot of effort to get it ready for the public to play. And so since it is ready, I might as well also uh, send it out to people online. Uh, but I don't know exactly when that would be. It will depend on, on how ready it feels once the show is over. I've been updating the game as I go, and uh, that has gone well. But uh, I'm about to die. <laughs> it's very difficult for a game to play when they're talking. Well, we seem to have been ending a lot of these interviews um, this weekend with... Uh, people dying so <laughs> it seems like a, a nice succinct way of wrapping things up thank you very much for your time look forward to playing more of the game and good luck with the rest of its development thanks a lot